When he starts writing the mezuzah, at the top of the mezuzah, he should leave the gap, um, which is the width of the, or the height of the, the roof of the lamad. That's been a space that the roof of the lamad is also, um, has got, will have parchment around it. When he, if he's got a lamad on the top line, so that the, the roof of the lamad won't hit the edge of the parchment, it has to be surrounded by parchment. That's been a space for that as well. At the bottom of the of the parasha, he has to leave enough space for a kafanun pshuta, uh, um, which we call a final kaf and final num, that the leg um, doesn't hit the bottom. Again, leaving enough space for the leg and with the hakofas gvil, a bit of parchment as well at the bottom, so it's around the parchment. At the beginning, the end of the tefillin. Right, the right and the left. The beginning is the right, the end is the left. He doesn't have to leave a gap at all. Hagol said the remark. Me who know how to write soifim, I'll only have to be tchil over soif. However, the soifim I know you have to leave um, a small, a small margin at the beginning and at the end of the um, at the end of the paragraph. So I'll only have been called table, table. Kim loy ois between each word. You have to leave enough um, space to write uh, a letter. V'chein bein ha-shitim kim lo shito. Also, between the lines, he should leave the, a gap of a line. Like we talked about this, there has to be enough space um, for him to, to have the roof of a lamad, which the roof of the, 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 the neck of a lamad is, is the size of a vov, which is, which is the size of a regular line. So he has to have enough, enough space between each line. He should leave the gap of a line, which is necessary for the for the neck of the lamad, so it doesn't hit any, any of the letters on the rubber. And between each letter, he leaves a hairbreadth. He must be careful not to leave too much of a gap between each letter, because then it might look like two two different words. So he has to leave a hairbreadth between each word, each letter. We mentioned if the letters are touching. Then it's possible because the letters aren't muk of kavil. Every letter has to be surrounded completely by parchment. So it has to be a hairbreadth of parchment between each letter. The letters mustn't be touching. Also, mustn't leave too much so it doesn't look like two words. The commotion is well over two years a day. Gamtoch, Maniach, Ma'at, Cholak, Bein Posak, Le Posak. The Mormons often says also you should leave a, a, a small gap between each Posak. Okay, says so the Mishnah Burra. We're not going to do them all. Let's just read the last one. Um, the, the, if, we, if we look on the next page on the top line, in the Mishnah where it says, um, In this last halacha of the Rumor, he says you should leave a gap between each posuk, and that says the, the Mishnah Bura, that the Mogravon and the Gro and Ava Achoinim say that we don't leave between each posuk more than we leave between words. This is how we know We don't leave between pasukim, and there's no extra gap. It's the same as between a, a word, words in the middle of a posuk. Um, I think the teimanim leave, leave between each, uh, between pasukim they leave a slightly bigger gap, I think. But we don't leave any bigger gap. We leave like the, the Mishabur says, the the Goran, the Mognavom. But so if you tell there's no difference between the Pesukim, there's no extra gap. There's no way of telling where the end of a Pesuk is and the beginning of the next Pesuk. Between the words between the Pesukim, it's the same gap. If someone read the law, <clears throat> I don't think I've ever seen this on a cloth, but in Siddur, it's very often, often you see a llama that has, it goes like this, it kind of curves. That's not a vav, right? right? right. Um, is that a correct llama, or is it no, just something that's, that's okay just, in a sitter? It's just, just, yeah. just for the printer. And yeah, the well, you're talking about where it actually lies down. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's just for the sitter. Right. We talked about if the sofa hasn't got room for the vav, the, the llama... He can lean it a little bit. Yeah. But he can't curve it, because it has to be still above. Yeah. So instead of after someone, he brings down the dish. 
Sorry, again? Instead of that, the Taimanim. Right, he mentions it then. Okay, very good. Okay. Excellent. Um, okay, let's move on. Let's see the next um, Sif. Sif Lamad Gimel. Right, we're now on the last, wo- last words of page 100. The last uh, words of the Shulchan Aruch. Sif Lamad Gimel. Yasa Shuvois Shavois. Shloite Achas Nichnesses Achas Yoitzes. He has to, it should make the lines um, um, equal so that one lane line doesn't go in another one out. They have to, the lines should end at the same uh, space, st- st- should be a block, right? Should end at the same spot. This is, this is very tough. This is a, one of the tough jobs of a sofa to make sure every, every line ends at the same space. He's got, remember, he's got limited uh, um, leeway with the letters, right? The letters have got certain widths, right? Some letters, if you do too wide or too narrow, you're distorting the letter. Right? So he has to read at the beginning of the line um, know how many letters he's got in the line. Not, not every line has the same number of letters. Right? So he has to know at the beginning of the line how many letters he's got, right? and, and ready plan from the beginning of the line if he's going to make them a, a tiny bit wider, a tiny bit narrower um, in order to end the line at the same spot. A number of sofa in order to help themselves, they'll, they'll draw a very faint pencil line down the middle of the parasha. Right? So then already, by, by, by the time they get towards halfway, they, they can see if they're, if they're writing a bit too wide or a bit too narrow. Right? Make a course really, correction. Right, make a course <laughs> correction right, already, uh, when they get to the halfway point. Right? This is very tough. Um, they could use a template to copy what they did last time. They, yeah, they do, they do copy. They are copying what they did. They've got a tick and they copy from a tick and so from. They have a tick and so from in front of them. And the tickets will also tell them how many letters there are on each on each line, right? So they can see if it's a slightly more squashed line or slightly more right. space line. But still, there are a um, few letters that they can use it actually to make something longer. So they can yeah, yeah. The, 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 the few letters they can use the base, the dalad, and the resh um, are letters that can be easily stretched without distorting them. Um, but again, you might not necessarily have one at the right spot. And also, if you if you stretch it too much, then it's also going to uh, and take away a bit from the. Beauty of the mezuzah. So, okay. Um, so this is this is the because of the beauty, because of their keli van to beautify the mezuzah, they should end exactly at the same spot. If you didn't quite get it right and it stretches out, it misses a little bit. How much leeway does one have? So if we carry on with the shofar, we're now in the middle of the top line. Yizoy shelo yichtoiv kimol oisios chutz lesheto v'mkos v'm lo posa. He he should try to make sure he doesn't have three letters sticking out of a, at the end of a line. But even if he did this, low possible. Even if he has three letters sticking out, it's still not possible. Right? So it's not good. we're not talking about passing the mezuzah. We're talking about the beauty of the mezuzah, the chatzchila. So preferably, we should in a straight line. If he can't manage that, at least he shouldn't have three lines, uh, three words um, sticking out, letters. three letters yeah, sticking out the line, three letters sticking out of the line. But even if he was missing three letters, were sticking out, it's still not possible. Let's see the next line of the shulach. Shulach sef lamedalid. When we said that he should at least have, shouldn't have three little letters sticking out, this is if the three letters of one word. But if you have a two-letter word, you should make sure that this two-letter word should not be out the line. Should be a, shouldn't have even two letters out the line if it's a two-letter word. Okay. And is this so if, sorry. And this would be possible. This also doesn't pass. So. This also doesn't pass. So. And the only halacha which is passes is the next one. Siflamid hey. This is our local to Machlokis of the Passos, and not therefore he should really be careful with this. The letters of Hashem's name. Here, with the letters of Hashem's name, he shouldn't even have one letter going outside the line. So, this is the most important. This one is Machlokis of the Passos, therefore, he should make sure not to have a single letter of Hashem's name sticking outside the line. Okay, so preferably he does it straight. Um, at, at least he shouldn't um, have three letters or a two letter word outside the line, but even if they did none of this puzzles, the only thing that puzzles is if he, if he has a letter of Hashem's name outside the line. Like he should actually make sure he doesn't do it at all. Okay. It doesn't, is there a comment about a, a short line? That is to say, two letters, it, it doesn't, let's say this is the line here, right? Yeah. And we've been talking about what happens when you go past it. Right. But what happens if you have to Let's say he comes out of Shem's name at right. the end of the line, right. and you say it's not going to fit. That means that line will be short. Right. So let's say two letters. Right. Yeah. So again, so that's 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 it's not, you haven't got the Zekeli Van I know, but it's yeah, the problem either way. That's so you haven't got the beauty of Zekeli Van Bey, no? Right. 
Right. You, you, you'd write the yud k vav on the next line, right? If you stick, if you write the yud the yud k and then the vav k is sticking out, that's no good. Right. So you have to write yud k vav in the next line. So now you're short two letters. Sh- sh- short two letters. Uh, that also doesn't so pass. Doesn't pass them, but again, you've lost from the right. the beauty. Okay. Okay. Let's move on now to sif lamed vav. It's a slightly long sif. Um, we'll give it. We'll give an introduction. Um, there's two types of parashas. In say for Torah Tefillah, there's two types of parashas. It's called one's called the parasha Psucha, and one's called the parasha Stuma. Right? When if you look in a regular Chumash, um, they'll put a pay to tell you if there's a parasha Psucha, pay for Psucha. They'll put a Samach to tell you if there's a parasha Stuma. Samach. Psucha mean, literally means an open parasha. Parasha Stuma means a closed parasha. Okay. Um, um, and we have Allah and Meshav Sinai, which, which parishes in the Torah are supposed to be so what, which ones are supposed to be open, which ones are supposed to be closed. Okay? The question is, how do you write them? Okay, the Allah and Meshav this parish, let's say a certain parish is supposed to be parish of Pesucha. So on, how does one write this parish of Pesucha in a Sefer Torah? How does one write it? Okay? If it's supposed to be parish of Stuma, how does one write the parish of Stuma? There's two shittas, two main shittas. The, the shitta of the Rosh and the shitta of the Rambam. Okay. Um, if in, in the Sefer Torah, what we do is we, we do something which we use according to everyone. Okay, we do we, we, we the way we write it. Look at the tip in here. There we go. Like a good example on this page. Here we have one of each. Okay, here, um, and uh, this line finishes slightly before halfway, and then we have a gap till the end, and we start a new line. Okay, this is, a, this is the Pasha Pesucha according to everyone. This is how we do a Pasha Pesucha in the Sefer Torah, because both according to the Rosh and the Rambam, there's a Pasha Pesucha. We've left more than a nine-letter gap at the end of the line, and then we start a new line. That's a Pasha Pesucha according to everyone, that's how we do a Pasha Pesucha in the Sefer Torah. This, the way we do Pasha Stum in the Sefer Torah is again, we leave more than a nine letter gap and then continue the next parish on the same line. That's a Pasha Stum according to everyone. Okay? Okay. So in both cases, there are at least nine letters, and the difference would be one you start on the same line and the other one you're going to start on the next line. Exactly, exactly. Okay? Now we're going to talk about whether we need Pasha Psuchos or Stumis in Tefillin. And it's going to get slightly complicated because we're going to see a, clay, a case where, where we, we can't do something, we, we can't follow both opinions. So we're going to have to pick and choose between the opinions, and then we'll have to talk a bit more about um, what they do in this particular case, what the Rosh says to do and what the Rambam says to do, in a case where you haven't got a nine-letter gap, or in a case where you have a Pasha Stoma has to start at the beginning of the line, what do you do? So we're going to talk about that. This is just the basics, and we'll, we'll add more as we go along. Let's first read the Shulchan Aruch. Sif Lamadvav. So we're now on the bottom line of page 101. Sif Lamadvav. Yaz they call Pashu Yiseho Psuchos. Okay? So we have in the Tefillin shell, um, in the Tefillin we have four Pashas. Right? We have four Pashas in the Tefillin. So you should, all of them should be Pashas Psuchos. Chutz mi Pash Achroino Hakshuva Batoiro. Shehi Vahoyo Im Shomaya. Except for the last of the four Pashas, which is Vahoyo Im Shomaya. Shehasen Ostumo. That one you should make sosum. So the first three should be parashas psuchos, and the last one vayim shemay should be a parashas stuma. Vim shino posel. If you didn't do this correct, then the tefillin are posel. Says the rumor. V'yish machshirim b'cholam psuchos. The rumor says that um, some are machshir if they are all parashas psuchos, meaning if. He did the the v'hoyon shamoya as a parsha p'sucha. It's okay. The first three have to be parshas p'suchos, and if he didn't do them parshas p'suchos, then it's, it's it's not kosher. The tefillin apostle. The last one v'hoyon shamoya, supposed to be parshas stuma. The rumor says if you wrote it as a parsha p'sucha, it's okay with the other. Okay, we're going to learn in a minute how one's going to write it in order to make a p'sucha. We're going to learn about this in a minute. Let's continue. That's because there's no parsha following it. Is that why? What, what yeah. defines if the Pasha Psucha Stuma is the Pasha beforehand, really? Right? The Pasha, Pasha if it's a Pasha, we, we explained that a Pasha Psucha right. in the Sefer Torah is a Pasha which is right. the previous Pasha ended 
more than nine letters before the end of the line, and then this one starts at the, on the beginning of the line. Okay, so it's a combination between what happened before and what's happening at the beginning. What happens at the end of the parasha is, is irrelevant. We're talking about the beginning of the parasha. Okay? Okay. Um, let's continue. The Bibudin is Eilu, Noagim Av Parashas Vahoyam Shomoya, Baroi Shashito, Kishara Parashas. Says the Ramor, we know you have to write Vahoyam Shomoya at the beginning of the line, to start at the beginning of the line like any other, like all the other parashas. Okay, let's continue. Vilochein Noagu, we're going to continue with all the Shulchan Aruch and we'll discuss Allah and Maisa. For me, it will be a couple of minutes ago. Vilochein Noagu. So therefore, the Minag is, she parashas Kadishli, Vahoya Kiyaviyacho, Okay. So we want them to be parishes Pesucha. So what we're going to do, the first three parishes, which are Kadesh, Vahoyo Kiviyacho, and Shema, all these three we're going to start at the beginning of the line. Okay? At the end of the parishes, we're going to leave a gap, we're going to leave enough of a gap to write nine letters. Okay? So if... Kadesh is a parasha of Pasha Pesuch. There's nothing written before it. We're starting at the beginning of the line. That's a parasha of Pesuch. We then continue to the end of the line, to the end of the parasha. At the end of the parasha, parasha of Kadesh, we leave a gap of ten, a ten-letter gap. Make sure to finish the parasha of Kadesh, leaving enough space on the line on the line to write nine letters. And then the next parasha, we start um, at the beginning of the line, right? Um, parashas Vahoyo um, is at the beginning of the line. That's a parasha of Pesuch according to everyone, according to Rambam and Rosh. That's fine. So, so, the, so the, the way is three, the first three are Segu uh, and the fourth one is the Ptucha? No, the other way around. Yeah, the first, first, the first three are supposed to be Pashas Psuchos uh-huh. and the fourth one are Pashas Stumma. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay? So, yeah, the first three start at the beginning. So, the, first, the way we do that is, is, is by starting, um, the, if, let's deal with the first three, it's supposed to be, be Pashas Psucha. In order to make them Pashas Psucha, each one is going to start at the beginning of the line. And each one, we're going to make sure that the previous parasha ended um, with enough space at the end, with, with a nine-letter gap at the end of the parasha. Okay, that's what we're going to do for all three of them. Okay, now what, what are we going to do with Vayom Shomoya? So let's continue to show the Now on the second line. Shema, Ein Manichin Cholok. At the end of Shema, we don't leave um, a gap at all. At the end of Shema, we don't leave a gap at all, or we leave a gap less than nine letters, right? because we don't want it to be a parashat p'sukh of Ayim So if we have a nine-letter gap at the end of parashat uh, Shema, then it's going to make parashat Ayim Shemayim enter parashat p'sukh. So we make sure it's not a nine-letter gap at the end of parashat Shema. And then we start parashat, the parashat Ayim Shemayim in the middle of the top line. And we leave a nine letter gap at the beginning of the line of um, at the beginning of the at the beginning of the parish of Vayim Shomai. The name says that three parishes have psuches between the Rambam and the Rosh. The parish of Chayyim is two letters of Rambam. Let's talk a bit more about the this last parish of the parish of Vayim Shomai. This is the complicated parish, okay? Because we're starting it. On a new line, we can't do right. We didn't say to Torah, continue it um, at the end, leave a nine-letter gap, and then start at the at the end of the line because we want to start. We start at the top of the new line of the, the new column, new column, right? So we can't do this idea that we do in the Sefer Torah, which is a partial stum according to everyone. The Shulchan Aruch then says we're going to have to choose between the Rosh and the Rambam. Okay, so what we do says says the Shulchan Aruch is we make sure we have less than a nine-letter gap at the end of the line. Then you leave a nine-letter gap at the beginning of Parashat Svarim Shemoya. And this is the Parashat Stuma according to the Rambam. And this is no good according to the Rosh. According to the Rosh, it's a Parashat Pesucha. Okay? And according to the Rambam, it's a Parashat Stuma. So when he chooses between the Rosh and the Rambam, he chooses the opinion of the Rambam. Leave a nine-letter gap, then start with Hoyam Shemoya. This is a Parashat Stuma according to the Rambam. This is what the Shulchan Aruch says one should do. Okay? Um, even according to the Rosh, it's not possible because we mentioned, the, the Ramah mentioned that even if you make Vayam Shamoya Pasha Pesuch, it's okay with the effort. Okay? So this is ideal according to the Rambam and it's okay according to the Rosh. Okay? This is called, a Ramb- this is, this is called Rambam. 
the Rambam Tefillin, Rambam Mezuzas, there are some people who write, who write like this. What most, uh, the Shadim also do this, I think. What most, what most Ashkenazim do is what's called a Taz Mezuzah, or a Taz, taz Tefillin. Let's see if the Mishra is going to tell us what they do. Um, the Taz is, um, it's on the Mishra page 104, that's on the, 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 the page we, we just got to, right? the, the, the last page of this if. It's about halfway. In mind, it's the last words on the line, about halfway down the, about halfway down the page. The last words on the line, there's a full stop, then it says, Ubataz. Last word on, on the left. That's, yeah. That's right. After Ayn Reish Hay. After Ayn Reish Hay and then Ubataz. Should be on the right page. Should be on the right page. Have you got the page number? It should be page 104. Page 104. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they haven't got in the last word in line. Maybe they changed yeah, the line slightly. The yeah, but Taz, um, it's about halfway down. If you see a full stop and then a Bataz. So he says, Bataz him to eat so last, so stum a sheet, I live to Kulam. The Taz thought of an idea to make it a Pasha stum according to everyone. The Hainish of a Pasha Alpha Bezias are called commercial cost of a Shukhana. In the first two parishes, he does exactly like it to Shadden Shukhana. Now, the Pasha Shemash of the Sofa, Yenach Revach Pochos Mikdate Shoisish. And the, the end of Parsha Shema, the end of the third Parsha Parsha Shema, he should make sure to leave a gap less than ten, nine, oise, nine, nine small oasis. At this point, it's the exact same. Right? The Echen Yaniach, Revach Pochus Metesha Oasis, Ketanis Parsha Tvayim Shemaya. At the beginning of Parsha Tvayim Shemaya, he leaves a gap of less than nine oasis. The Alizei Zeshain Lotesha Oasis, Bamokum Echot, Kim Alidi Tziruf, Inikus Tuma. Because you haven't got nine, a nine letter gap um, but it by itself, Either, neither gap is nine letters, between the two of them is a nine letter gap. And he says that's a parish storm according to both the Shulchanach and according to the Rambam and the Rosh. The Kane Kosov of the Rambam in Panel, the Bibi Agro, the Kane Mashman Priya Rogodim, Shikam, who, Noah Glass, those Kane, the Mishabur mentions that all the Achoinim agree with this. So this is called, this is called the Taz Mazuza. And this is a total taz tefillin, and this is what uh, most uh, Ashkenazim do. This is what, unless you ask specifically for a for, uh, Shulchan or, or Rambam uh, and Mezuzah, this is what you get, right? Rambam tefillin, Rambam Mezuzah, uh, uh, you get taz tefillin, taz Mezuzah. They have less than a nine letter gap at the bottom of the of, of Shema, and less than a nine letter gap at the beginning of Shemaya. Between the two you have a nine letter gap, and uh, and that's, uh, then it's a parasha stum. Then Vayim Shema is a parasha stum. Okay. If there was a nine-letter gap, the rush says that's not stuma. So why would less than nine be stuma? Because it's zero. Accord, again, according, according to the rush. Yeah. The Rambam at the beginning of the line you leave nine letters. Right. Um, why are you able to do that? Because there were less than nine in the previous line. Right. And <clears throat> he calls that stuma. We said the rush doesn't call that stuma. Right. The rush holds what, what one does in that situation according to the rush. According to the rush, is one leaves a whole line and it starts from the begin at the beginning of the next line. In that case. Uh-huh. That's what the. That's so how does this? The, how, how is this good by the rush? Because of the the because of the, you're you're adding the two together. Because it's it's, it's not it's, uh, because it's between the two of them, right? According to the rush, the, what we, the Rambam said to leave a nine letter gap and the start at the start after that. That's a partial psuch according to the rush. Right. Here you haven't got that nine letter gap at the beginning of the, at the beginning of the line. You have, you only get the nine letter gap making it two of combining the two gaps. So and according to the Taz says that that's a, a storm according to everyone. Right? 